Hey, how's it going guys? Thank y'all so much for tuning in to another video. So this is part two of what I've learned uh, during uh, this first flip that my wife and I are working on. So we've learned a ton of information, but before we get started, uh, go ahead and click like, all right, on this video. And if you have not already subscribed so that you're notified of whenever I am posting another video. All right, awesome. So let's uh, go ahead and get to it. So part two. So something else that I learned is uh, not underestimating uh, your trash, all right? So when it comes to picking out a dumpster, all right, whatever you think you need, get one that's a little bit bigger, all right? Uh, we underestimated how much trash we we're gonna have uh, and it just caused us to just spend more money and getting a bigger dumpster, which is something that we should have done in the first place. So that's something that I would definitely say, make sure whatever dumpster you think you need, get one that's a little bigger, all right? So that's something to think about. Number two, um, be detailed uh, in your plan of where everything should be. All right, so in this flip, there was a bathroom that we had. It was gutted down to the studs when we bought it. Uh, and plumbing was in weird spots. And so when it came down to it, it was a thing of, we have to figure out how we're gonna configure this bathroom now because it has to make sense. So we can't just say, all right, well, we're just gonna go where the plumbing is because where the plumbing was didn't make sense. And it's like, well, it seemed like they were remodeling, they uh, expanded the size of the bathroom. So where the plumbing was, it's now not there. And it was a whole situation. So. It was it was interesting to say the least, but we had to redo everything. Okay, and so with that, uh, I reached out to another uh, investor, and we had her on Facetime to say, like, "Hey, look, we are trying to figure out, you know, wh where to put this. Where where should we put the toilet? Does it make sense here? Does it make sense here? Like, okay, the shower. Okay, we agree that the shower will stay there." Does it make sense to, to put shelves here? Does it make sense to, like we had to really figure out, okay, where would the sink go? Okay, will we have like a his and her on opposite sides? Will we have a neck? Like where would everything go? And so uh, by really having that detailed plan, like room by room, like, hey, all right, what are we gonna do here? All right, this just carpet and paint. Okay, cool, here, what are we, okay, we're gonna remove that. Like, okay, we're gonna change the, like be detailed with every room so that when a contractor comes in, you don't let them freestyle. You don't want to contract their freestyle because uh, they will, they'll, they'll whip up something decent, right? They'll be like, oh yeah, I think you need to redo this, blah, blah, blah. Gold plated everything. Uh, yeah, and right here, I'm thinking, I'm thinking expensive right here. I'm thinking, I'm thinking real expensive right here. What, what do you think? Yeah, because you didn't have a plan. So I'm thinking right here, we're just going to go ahead and uh, charge a little bit more right here, right? So make sure you're detailed with what you are saying to these contractors and have that plan way ahead of time because you don't want them planning for you. All right, uh, so next, visit that work site a couple times a week. Uh, so I'm not saying that you have to go there every day. Uh, at one point in time, I was that guy, just making sure that everything was being done, but you wanna make sure that you are checking that, that spot out a couple times a week just to make sure that things are running smoothly, all right? You, you don't want to, you don't want to not go for a couple weeks and then you show up and it's like, oh, nothing was done these past couple weeks, but I thought you said, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I had another job across town, so blah, blah. Make sure you're checking. Uh, and you also want to make sure they're not building on already bad patterns, right? So if something is starting wrong, you don't want them to build on top of the wrong thing you want to make sure you're checking it out to make sure that everything is being done properly. So make sure you check on that job site at least a couple times a week. All right, and next, something that came in handy like tremendously, and I'm so glad I got this ahead of time, was a lockbox, all right? Lockboxes makes things so much easier because I, I get it, right? You may be the person that's like, oh no, I'm gonna go there every day and I'm gonna unlock the door and I'm gonna watch you guys come in and out. And then I'll come in at the end of the day, I'm gonna check out the area, make sure everything's all there, and then it's all good. Trust me when I tell you, all right? Cause you're gonna have to trust these contractors on some level anyway, because you're not gonna be there 24 hours a day. So make sure you have a lockbox and the contractor has a code and they're able to go in and out of the house. And I would, what I would do is for like the first couple of days, I would go in after them, just making sure 
that they actually did lock up everything and that code is not left on the box because that's that's a, a red flag you don't want somebody coming in after you and seeing that code and now they got access just like the contractors do and they just time when the contractors leave so that's what i did the first couple of days just making sure that nobody had making sure that they locked up everything when they left uh and once i did that then i knew that they were consistent so i did, i limited it down to you know just going down uh, a couple uh days out the week so uh this is part two this is going to be a several part series all right uh, when it comes to different things that i've learned uh throughout this flip process uh yeah it's going to be a lot of parts of this so um these are just some uh things that are, are some tips that i've just learned and i'm just sharing with you guys to make sure that whenever you guys are working on your first flip you guys take this information and apply it to whatever you're doing. And I'll tell you this, whatever you're learning on your flip, also just comment that uh, in, in the section below uh, and just inform us of the different things that are happening. Uh, Cause of course, you know, we look forward to, to that happening too. So I'm looking forward to, you know, build a, a community of people that's just learning and just sharing information with each other. So just make sure that whatever you learn, it's like, Hey, nobody's too experienced. Uh, to learn from somebody that's you know day one day two all right and the day one day two person don't be you know too proud to ask somebody that maybe is in the game for six days and it's year two uh and they've experienced something that you didn't so it, it's all good um but again thank y'all so much for watching this video and i look forward to sharing as much information as i can so that you guys can be successful on your real estate and business journey so again, if you have not already, go ahead and like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you are notified of whenever I am posting another video. All right. So with that being said, uh, thank you all again uh, for watching and go ahead and watch another video of mine as well. I speak a lot about wholesaling and different tips uh, that you could use in order to find your first deal, uh, what to do when it comes to networking with different individuals. Uh, and I, I speak about a lot of different topics, but again, thank y'all so much. And I look forward for y'all to get y'all first deal and for y'all to get y'all first flip and to be successful in whatever you're doing in business. Thank y'all so much.